In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use my digital backgrounds to get some fun digital effects with my Procreate brushes. I've included the links below where you can find some free Procreate brushes and some free digital backgrounds on my website, as well as the link to my Etsy shop where you can find these brush packs. So I like to start my canvas out as a perfect square. I always go 8 inches by 8 inches and a 300 dpi. So I'm going to bring in my first background. So I go into my photos where I have the image saved. I have them in their own album and I'm just going to pick one. I have an assortment here. Some you'll find on my website uh, for free and other ones I have available on Etsy along with brushes. So I'm going to start with this one. Now it brings it in on its own layer and I have to go in now and create a new layer that's going to be on top of this layer and I'm going to fill this layer with a white color, a solid white. The first method I'm going to show you is going to be the subtractive method, so I'll be using the eraser. Now the nice thing in Procreate is that the eraser can use any brush that you can use with your pen. I'm going to start with this lettering brush called Gloss, and I have this one available for free on my website at the link below. So now that I make sure that I am on the white layer and it's lying above the color, and I start to use the eraser tool. So it's basically just erasing the white from the layer and showing the color from underneath. Even though we're using an eraser, it retains all the information of opacity and pressure sensitivity, and therefore you still get the same look as if you were drawing in a colored ink. Now to get the idea of the true power of this, I'm going to go back in and bring in another background texture into the same project. This layer is going to come in at the very top, so I just have to move it down below. It doesn't really matter where below, just as long as below the white layer. And then I turn off the previous layer, and now you can see the letter has taken on all the colors and texture of this new image. So in this method, anything that lies underneath that top white layer that I've erased on will show through. So let's just choose a solid color here. I think I'm going to go with a nice bright blue and I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to fill the entire layer with the blue and see now because it's the only layer on, that's what you see through the top layer. There's no texture to this one, but you can still see the drop shadow of the brush and the highlights of the brush. So that's the first method and that's fairly simple. Now I'm going to show you the next method you can use to play around with these backgrounds. So I'm going to erase that one and I'm going to create a new layer and fill it again with white. So I always have a layer on the top that's filled with white. Now this method we're going to use blend modes. So I'm going to start by changing my ink color to black and I'm going to use the same gloss pen and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to draw a letter on my top layer that's filled with white. I go back into my layers and I leave the background image with a normal blend but I change the blend mode on this top layer. I'm going into the lighten category and this time I've chosen screen. You kind of play around with all the ones that are in the lighten because they all seem to take on a little bit different of a look depending on what your image underneath is. I usually use screen or add but sometimes lighten works best. See I really like the shadow showing through with the lighten blend mode here. And then I can just go through the different background images by turning them on and off. And they're all going to respond a little bit differently, but you get the idea here. So this solid color might not look good with the light and it might look better with the screen or perhaps the ad. There's not a big difference between screen and ad with the solid color. It's good to experiment with them and see which one shows up the nicest. So color dodge is kind of fun with this one. It doesn't usually work with them, but this one in particular gives a nice funky effect. So this technique works in the lighten category. So you just want to try out any of the modes that are within the lighten category and they'll all show a little bit differently depending on the image you have in the background. And you can even create your own background with this mode on and watch it appear in front of your eye. Now let's move on. I'm going to get rid of this layer and I'm going to create another new layer, fill it with white. And I'm also going to work with another brush that I have here, a watercolor leaf brush that I created. So I'm going to go back in and put in another image into my project because I want to work with something that I made specifically for this watercolor brush. This brush and the images are available over on my Etsy shop. So this one here I have as a watercolor background made with different kinds of greens. And now I'm going to go back into my brushes and I'm going to start with my eraser again and we're going to try the subtractive method. 
And I'm going to scroll over to the folder I have this one in, and there it is. It's a watercolor leaf brush. Now again, I'm working on my white layer. I'm going to have this up as high as I can. I want to make just a large stamp of it. And it doesn't show up, so I'm not on the right layer. So take that back. Make sure you are on the white layer. So there we are, not on my background image. Try again, and there we go. So that's the brush full size with all of its opacity. and. We are going to bring it down in size and I'm going to show you how it flows around. You can draw letters with this shape brush and it's all using the subtractive method with the background showing through. I can size this up a little bit and I can draw a nice laurel, a nice round wreath of these leaves. And again, the background image is showing through. So I've just erased from the top layer. So I can now change it up and use a different background image behind it to give it a new kind of interesting look. So the fun thing with this is that no matter what design I draw, I can still change up the look of it by changing up the background. So whether I use the solid color or whether I use one of my interesting digital background images, it's all going to give it a different look. I also want to show you a little trick with some of these brushes that use the Apple Pencil. So I'm just going to fill in my top layer again, fill it with white. You don't even have to delete it, you can just fill over top of what you've erased. And I'm going to place my brush here. Now depending on how I tilt my Apple Pencil, I'm going to get a different angle for this brush. It's partly how I have the brush set up. I have it following strokes so that when you draw, you can do lettering with it. But depending on how I use the pencil, I tilt it this way, I tilt it that way, I get all different angles of this leaf pattern. Now if I just use my finger, I get a very consistent leaf pattern. It is always upright. So I just want to show you that little trick if you're using the Apple Pencil, which I usually suggest for most of my brushes. It is going to depend on how you hold the pencil as to how you tilt it. Now when I'm doing, say, a pattern like this, I'll use my finger because I want the leaf pattern to be up and down. So I'll just use my finger because sometimes you can really fight with the Apple Pencil to get that perfect up and down. So see how I can get all the colors to come through once I get that nice big leaf pattern in there? So most of my brushes that are drawings that I've done, whether they're flowers or leaves, botanical type drawings, they're set up for the Apple Pencil so that you can letter with them and they follow the flow of the pencil, the tilt, and the pressure. But if you're just looking for a simple stamp of the image, your finger is often the best way to get that. So here I'm going to make it as large as I would like it to be and just stamp it in the middle with my finger. So now I'm going to go into my layers. And you can see my image is in black on the top layer and I've chosen the lighten mode. So I can turn the background images on and off and get different looks depending on which image or color I'm choosing. So that pretty much covers the two different methods that I use to use the background images with my brushes to create some fun digital effects. Check out the links below and you can get started with my free brush and my free digital background available at my website.